Oh, this is Professor Cummings. I'm here with another uh, video, a short video for differential equations. Uh, in this one I want to go over first order linear differential equations. Now what I want to cover in this particular video is uh, just a short overview of it. I want to give you an idea of what the applications are going to be for a first order linear. And why would you even use this type of differential equation? Uh, as well as how to identify a, this type of differential equation. So I'm going to show you the standard form. I'm going to give you some ideas of what each one of these components of the standard form actually means. Then I want to go through the, the four steps of solving a first order linear differential equation. So why do you even need to know this one? Well, if you're an engineer or you're a scientist or somebody who's just trying to understand how a system may work, uh, something that has an input and an output, uh, you're trying to influence the system with the particular input and you're trying to get a particular type of output or you're just trying to find out how that output is changing uh, you're going to use a first order linear differential equation. Some of the applications that you'll see is uh, a classic one is in uh, what they call mixing problems. Uh, in this particular problem you have a tank. The tank has a particular concentration that uh, is in a usually dissolved in water uh, the tank has a an input that you're trying to change or you're trying to change this through an input so maybe this is salt in a tank you want to lower or raise the concentration of salt in that tank uh, you would put in a, a different uh, concentration of salt say a, a higher concentration of salt to try and influence the, the what's already there and as a result you end up getting a different output of the, from the tank you know that that could be modeled as a first order linear differential equation another type of differential equation is uh, you'll see environmentalists uh, if you have a, a lake like in uh, Cleveland back you know a couple of decades ago there was a, a very polluted lake up in, uh, in Ohio that uh, uh, was polluted because of a, a factory uh, off cast from a, from a factory um, what they figured is if you know they stopped putting pollutants into the into the, the water uh, having the certain input that they know coming from streams and rivers going into the tank or going into the, the lake and coming out of the lake they could calculate you know how long it would take for that lake to actually recover how fast the pollutants were going down and how long it would take for certain uh, deposits to actually leave the system and you see this a lot with electrical examples of uh, resistance capacitance circuits you know so you've got a capacitor in a circuit and you've got an input of certain type of voltage uh, a certain type of resistance and how fast that uh, the capacitance reaches up to its full potential and, and dissipates its electricity and dissipates its charge you know so you're looking at changing systems with an input and an output that's what they all have in common all three of them the examples I gave you and many more there's more examples than just that so you've got some sort of a, a input you know and an output you know some sort of an input and an output in the system you know in, in each one of these cases uh, there and you know in this case you got this current flowing through the circuit and you've got an actual system that you're concerned with the system that is actually the, the object of your concern so you're looking at the changing system now keep in mind uh, that that uh, important phrase that you changing system or, or changing rate of the system and it, I'll be a little more mathematical changing with respect to time okay so now you can see there's a differential there so we've there's actually you know verbally there's a differential equation you know so you know these systems can all be modeled with that specific type of differential equation the first order linear differential equation and you can think of it as you know the change in system at any given time which is just the you know the change in the system which is you know d over dt of the system you know change with respect to time is equal to the input minus the output you know so I mean, I'm just putting it in most simple terms that is what a first order linear differential equation will look like if you just said it verbally and if you were just to think of it you know in terms of uh, intuition you know if you just try and think of it intuitively so you know you're you're adding uh, you know salty water into a tank and you're measuring how fast that salt is changing with respect to time you should be able to model it and come up with some idea as to where that salt is at any given point in time you know for that particular system now you're making a lot of assumptions as you are with any differential equation and any type of mathematical model but you know that's fundamentally how a, a differential equation and particularly in this case first order linear differential equation actually works so 
you know, what all goes into this? We take this mathematically. So that's the intuition. So let's take this mathematically and try to make this uh, look more like a problem that you're going to solve and, and a model that you're going to create. So how do you solve? So solving the first order linear ODE, ordinary differential equation, and I'm going to give it to you uh, the four steps of actually solving it. But before you can solve a first order linear differential equation, uh, let's try to understand what this is. You know, how would you identify it? Okay, so this is the standard form of a first order linear differential equation. So you got the derivative of y with respect to x plus p of x times y is equal to f of x. So this is the standard form. You know, the standard form. This is what, you know, when you solve these types of problems, this is the form you want to put it in. But they don't always come in this form. You've got to be able to identify everything in this equation to know what you're looking at and know that you are indeed looking at a first order linear differential equation as opposed to an autonomous or separable or exact or Bernoulli or all the other things that you might have. Um, what this is, so, or excuse me, what, some of the things you want to look at when you start uh, going through your identification process. Uh, first, since it's a first order linear ODE, you know, you got to make sure that the independent variable, the y, are, uh, and its derivatives are raised to the power of 1. All right, so in this case, you've got y and its derivative. You know, this would be what concentration is in the lake, or the co output concentration, and the concentration that would be in the lake, or the tank, or the capacitor. You know, the rate of change of the system with respect to time. And in order for this to be uh, a linear, these have to be raised to the power of 1. You know, higher than the power of 1, it's no longer a linear system. If this were raised to the power of 2 or 3 or 4, you'd have to use a different method of solving it. You wouldn't be able to solve it as a first order linear. You'd probably have to go through something like a Bernoulli uh, solution or, or something like that. So that is the first clue that you've got a first order linear differential equation is that you've got to raise to the power of 1, which means it is indeed, it puts the linear in first order linear. Okay. The second one is the highest derivative is the first derivative. You don't have a second derivative or a third derivative. So in this case, again, you've got a first order uh, differential equation because this is just the first derivative. Okay. So we know this is a first order linear differential equation because, you know, number one, there's no exponent uh, greater than 1. This is, so the exponent of 1 on the independent variable and its derivatives. Excuse me, uh, and number 2, it is uh, the, just the first derivative. Okay, so so that's our, our first thing to uh, keep in mind. Or that, 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 so, so once we've seen that, we know we've identified that we've got a first order linear differential equation. So now, now that we know that, how do we go about actually um, solving this first order linear differential equation. Well, there's four steps. Okay, the first step, once you've identified it and you know what p of x is and you know what y is, dy dx, uh, you know, and the f of x is, both of which are just functions of x, that's all they are. You know, they often, in a real problem they'll come across as uh, just coefficients. You know, you come with the integrating factor. Now, if you don't know what the integrating factor is, it is, uh, I went through an entire proof of that in, a, in another video, and I'll put a link below so you can see that and be able to know how to go about, you know, solving it and proving it. But shy of having to actually prove it, you can just take it as u of x is equal to e raised to the integral of p of x uh, with respect to d of x. So you're just looking at this coefficient of y, and it is p of x and that, you know, the integrating factor is just e raised to the integral of p of x d of x. So now that you've got an integrating factor, you can multiply both sides of the linear differential equation, once it's in a standard form, you know, by that integrating factor. So we take it in standard form and we multiply it through, so you get u of x, the integrating factor, times the derivative of y, plus p of x, times u of x, the integrating factor, times y, f of x, u of x. So you've multiplied through. You haven't, you know, it's still an equation. The equation's just, you know, it's still, both sides are still equal. You've multiplied everything by the same thing. And that integrating factor, you know, is, is just changed the problem just enough for us to come through with a solution. We can't solve this without the integrating factor, not very easily. You know, so what we did with this integrating factor, we now have a variable 
and we have over here the derivative of that variable now that puts us in the form of the product rule okay so the product rule you have f of x times you know f g prime of x plus g prime of x times or excuse me f prime of x times g of x that's the product rule and since that comes to a derivative so now you just have you know you can just take the variables and recognize that they're a derivative you know if we wrote this in the Leibniz form it would just be over you know d this over dx okay or d, d, d dx times this quantity here without the prime so we got a, a derivative here is equal to f of x times u of x so our next step is we want to integrate both sides of the equation all right take the antiderivative and this is why it's easy this is why uh, using the integrating factor makes things a lot easier you know since we're looking at the product rule we've got you know the two variables and their derivative the antiderivative of a derivative is just simply the argument that you're looking at which means we've, we've integrated both sides so u of x times y is equal to the integral of the integrating factor times f of x dx okay so I didn't show I didn't work this one out I didn't mean basically I'm gonna leave it in that form uh, just so you know for simplicity's sake and we'll go into more examples in, in another video in a follow-up video and finally get to the solution we solve it explicitly in terms of y so this this is the variable that you we want to actually see and, and understand how it's changing with respect to time so we divide both sides by the integrating factor so the integrating factor is 1 over the integrating factor or this comes up to y is equal to 1 over the integrating factor times the anti antiderivative of u of x times f of x times d of x or excuse me d of x not times d of x so that is you know the uh, this the four steps of solving it so you understand what you know how to use this or why you would want to use this particular type of differential equation and how to recognize it in standard form and now you know finally you know the four steps in solving a uh, first order linear differential equation in the next video I'm going to actually go through some actual examples you know we'll go through some actual examples and uh, then we'll go through or I, I have other videos that I've already made that uh, you can look up if you want to get ahead of things and actually see a model of a first order linear differential equation you, you're using it actually being applied to a model and not just using uh, uh, doing it just by the numbers and finding and find an answer all right, so this is Professor Cummings. Uh, I'll see you in my next video. Uh, thanks a lot.